Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you another YouTube video. And I'm getting gassed. I'm getting gassed. I'm not going to lie. Got to start with that. I am getting hyped. You don't see me like this very often. I do try and keep it under wraps. Just going to mute my phone onto notifications off because I want to give you my full focus. I am getting so hyped right now. But let's take it down a breath. I've got some things to cover today. We're going to do a little bit of TA. Don't know if I covered this in my last YouTube video. It's just a potential Bitcoin play that I saw. This is why I took a leverage trade in XRP. Um, got some news. But buckle in. Buckle in, strap in. Get ready for this. Look at me. Now look at the charts. Now look back at me. Now look at the charts. And get ready for this. <laughs> Let's get it. Right, so let's talk about Bitcoin real quick. Real quick. I, I'll try not to spend too long on TA. Um... Because I post most of it on my Twitter anyway, so go and check that if you don't already follow me there. This is the trade that I put on. Uh, it was based on the, the weekly time frame um, for Bitcoin. The, so the relative strength, um, relative strength, in, in, <laughs> the relative strength index um, is down here. When we've had this bullish cross uh, above the 14 uh, simple moving average, which is just a new update for the relative strength index. Um, We've had a rally following it. So previously, we had one on the 5th of October 2020, and we had all these weeks of green price action, ended up in a 500% rally. And then we had one on the 19th of July 2021. It led to all these weeks, uh, positive price action, led to 115%. We had a confirmed um, cross on the 14th of March, which was last week. And now, what are we looking for? All those weeks. That's what we're looking for, guys. So that's the first indicator for you. And then we're going to look at Bitcoin quickly. And we'll look at ETH actually first. ETH looking kind of nice, not going to lie. If we get this weekly close here, we've reclaimed this 50-week moving average. Uh, and we are looking towards that bullish momentum again. We do want to close above 3,400 to really start to continue on this bullish journey for Ethereum. But again, it's had its uh, RSI cross right now. And we've got obviously uh, ETH 2.0. In the, in the back burner. So that's some uh, positive narrative to come for ETH. One thing that does worry me a little bit about ETH 2.0 is, you know, like the always the, the standard, like buy the new, buy the rumor, sell the news sort of thing. So when ETH 2.0, what like comes out, what could happen? There's going to be a lot of ETH unlocked with stake. And I know it's unlocked incrementally, but still does worry me. But up until that point, we're rallying. We're rallying, in my opinion. Honestly, do think alt season could just be around the corner right now. Um, these three candles here do really remind me of these three here. Could we be looking at for a breakout? And actually, I didn't. Uh, don't really want to get too hype here. But yesterday, let me let me find this coin trader. I want to show you something that I was doing on the charts yesterday. And again, this is big speculation. But sometimes, you know, when you see stuff, guys, I've just got to show you what I see. Okay. So this is XRP on the weekly. I was, I was messing around with the charts yesterday with one of my friends. Uh, we're on Discord, um, and. Let's just let's just get into what I saw. And this is not financial advice by any means at all. This was just me simply messing around with some charts on CoinTrader Pro. So take us back. We're on the weekly here. So if you want to set these like fibs up for yourself, then you can. Uh, we're on the weekly time frame. Taking us back to 2013's all-time high, uh, obviously to the low. And where do we get the extension? Where does it bring out, us out to? The 1.618, okay? So that's 40 cent that it brings us out to. Well, it does wick higher, but we'll just go for that now. So 1.618 is where this full uh, breakout takes us to. So we have all this consolidation, like three years consolidation. In 2017, we break out to the 1.618. And then if you do the same thing um, with your next with your next breakout, hang on, let's see if we can get there, um, which is here. Hang on. Right. So basically, what I've done, okay. So I've not I've not lined the fibs up from uh, the from the from the one, which is the, obviously the high. I've done it from like a super extension sort of uh, cycle. So from the 0.236, that's where I've used as the top, and obviously the bottom as the bottom. And then so from the next breakout that it had. So this is in 2017. This is in May. So because like, we had like two alt seasons in um, 2017. So this was the first alt season. So we broke out, wicked above the 1.618, as I said. And then I put the Fibonacci um, retracement tool on this. Uh, previous cycle as well so then we've used the top to the bottom on this so this middle section here is that i'll move this this out of the way now hang on just to make it more clear for you guys come on come on okay we can just delete you then we're gonna play games like that um so then we've got this let me just see if it's lined up properly again as i said i was just messing around yesterday with the charts of my friend um so that was the previous all-time high that i showed you went above the 1.618 
And then where'd this one go? Okay, well, it goes higher than that to the 2.618. And it literally, it's a very similar wick. Look, wick's just above that. So then we get rid of this. So then we do the same thing for the price action from where we are now. Again, like it is pretty hard to draw on because, okay, there we go. So on that basis, the first one, the first breakout took us to the 1.618. The second breakout took us to the 2.618. This third breakout, would it take us to the 3.618? I don't know. I, you know, I'm targeting 1310 ish for this cycle, so that's that is my personal target. If it takes us to the the 2.618 guys, uh, sorry, the 3.618, we're looking all the way at 57 dollars. Would be a sequ uh, sequential increase, like like we've seen in the past. Not saying it's going to happen. Just thought I'd show you. Like, just remember that while we were looking at this. So there's that TA wise. That's all the TA want to do today. Um, uh, one thing I want to show you the, S the S and P uh, that has actually come up a bit above the moving averages. Let me just we had the daily candle closes there above the moving averages yesterday on the S and P. Just going to try and find that chart now, but I can't find it now. I'm talking to you guys. Here we go. Here. So on the weekly look, we have actually had that weekly candle close back above the 50, and on the daily we are now back above the moving averages look. So yesterday we came back, back tested the 50. We would be looking for a continuation day today. If we see a green day today in the S&P, uh, I do think, well, I think we're having a green day anyway in crypto, but it would be nice to see that. Um, maybe lose some DXY strength. DXY is sort of hovering in this area. That is creating sort of a bull flag pattern there that is a continuation pattern uh, to look to break out. But let's, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm very, very optimistic that we see uh, an old season here, personally. Uh, and now we're going to get into some news. Actually, no, we're not. Just going to talk about this quickly. My guy, Digital Perspectives, retweeted my TA. This is something that I kind of saw. Um, this is a bars pattern from uh, that March period where I showed you the three weekly candles. This is a bars pattern from there. Um, we have the initial breakout. This, this is a daily. We have a breakout. It takes us up to like 220. We come down and retrace into this area here that we found resistance on. And then we break out again and consolidate above this trend line. And I'm going to show you like a more zoomed out version now. See, there's that trend line it's from the previous all time high, touching the 190 that we touched back in March, and then consolidate on top of that boom for the next push out. And then that next breakout target would be 450 to five dollars, um, which would be a completion of this cup and handle breakout pattern. Uh, imagine if we could get this before the lawsuit settles. That's something that I want to say. Like. Mm. There we go. That's thoughts. That's thoughts. I've had too much coffee this morning, guys. So I'm very, very uh, high practice right now. So lawsuit updates. Here we go. This is what we're talking about, baby. So James Philan came out yesterday or filing. Um, the individual defendants have filed their objection. Uh, the SEC has delayed the resolution of this case for long enough. Nothing should further delay Ripple from moving for summary judgment and demonstrating to the court that XRP is not a security. The court should deny the SEC's motion for yet another extension of time. Oh my God, that Ripple are not messing around anymore. Let me have another sip of the coffee. They are on it now. And then this next tweet, again, another one, as DJ Khaled might say. Um, so Ripple and the individual defendants have filed their response explaining why the Hinman documents are, are not irrelevant as such uh, <clears throat> as a result of Judge Torres' decision on the motion to dismiss. And then Ashley, Ashley Prosper one, he says that he highlights this section. And this is so exciting if you're an XRP holder. This is what uh, Matthew Solomon said. The SEC should not be permitted to argue the fact finder that Mr. Garlinghouse and Mr. Larson were reckless not to recognize XRP purchases saw XRP as an investment in a common enterprise while concealing potentially that the SEC's own director of division of corporate finance had analyzed substantially similar digital assets and maybe even XRP itself was concluded concluded it that it was not. So basically what he's saying is there, <laughs> that my word just got twisted so many times like tongue twister. But basically what he's saying there is, and we'll go into Jeremy Hogan, uh, Jeremy Hogan's uh, tweet, he, he breaks it down better. Um, yes, yeah, this one. Um, I tried to analyze it in true legal sense, but my mind was blown by the part earlier. I couldn't think about much else. Is the SEC potentially hiding a document in which the SEC concluded that XRP was not a security? What does Solomon know? And I want to take you guys back to think about who works at Ripple and who used to work at the SEC. In my opinion, they know. Like, those ex SEC employees know what are in those documents. They do. They must know. They must know. 
And then this is the next. Uh, oh, have I got it set up? Nope. Is it that one? Is it that one? Nope, nope. Okay, so it's this. Is this one? Okay, this is the, this was the other thing that I wanted to show you guys, and this is mad. Um, yeah, this is this is the one. Jeremy Hogan, the SEC is requesting requesting an extension, of course. But footnote two, this oh, this is in regarding to uh, the SEC filing for another extension, but it's in the defendant's case specifically. So Brad Garner helps Chris Larson case. I think I've done these in the wrong order, but it is what it is. Um, Ripple is suggesting that initial summary judgment briefs be filed by May. The SEC is, of course, saying that's too soon, but the end is in sight. So what does this mean? Well, XRP Crypto Wolf, is there a high possibility the XRP lawsuit uh, might settle in April or May? Jeremy Hogan. Generally speaking, a settlement is most likely after discovery is closed and before some re-judgment briefs are filed. We're not quite finished with discovery yet, but almost, and it looks like some re-judgment will be filed in May or June. So that means that we should start to see, if we're going to get a settlement, it should be before May or June, as as that goes, as that goes, right there. Um, there's one other thing that I did want to discuss that I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, it's in, the, it's in the response to this. So going back to where we were just talking a second ago about William Hinman and the potential that XRP is not a security and that he's even said that in that email chain that we are still waiting for the judge to get uncovered. Rene said, do you think a settlement is coming in the next weeks? Jeremy Hogan, uh, John Deaton said it would be months, but if those emails are required to be turned over, the settlement will be shortly after. Then John Deaton actually replies saying, if Judge Netburn orders the emails to be turned over, as I believe she will, the SEC will have 10 days to appeal to Judge Torres. If Judge Torres affirms Judge Netburn, the SEC could try and appeal or writ of mandamus in the Second Circuit to delay a couple of months, but the clock will be ticking for a settlement. So guys, we are waiting for a bombshell of news from the judge. We're waiting for the biggest piece of news ever that could come at any time and it could literally decide the future of this case. We could see, in my opinion, we could see a settlement at any point. We could see uh, Judge Netburn come out and say emails should have to be turned over. The SEC then have a decision to make. Do they settle then? Do they try and appeal that? Does Judge Torres come through and stamp her authority on this? Guys, it is heating up big time. We're waiting for this big decision from Judge Netburn that could come at any time. And within this time period, there could be any anything happening. Anything. So, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting. Um, and then this is pretty cool. Uh, anyone who likes ODL, I'm going to quickly touch on this. I'm just going to play this video for you guys uh, and then touch on what's going on quickly. Be happier with the year that we had uh, in 2021 with RippleNet. Uh, we ended the year at a $10 billion run rate in terms of volume moving through RippleNet uh, as a whole. And we're in 22 destination markets with 22 destination markets. Wow. On demand liquidity. And that was a core piece of feedback that we heard from customers. They want that product, but they want it in more destinations. We're close to having global coverage of ODL, which is super exciting. We're close to having global coverage of ODL, guys. This is insanity. What, what are we hearing? What What is actually going on? I feel like I'm living in a dreamland. Ripple are close to having ODL worldwide, which has on-demand liquidity, which directly leverages XRP. After reading the thread that Raul Powell made last week about how network volumes are, like network volumes predict the price of the network, which predicts the price of the asset going forward. Guys, it is heating up so much. Like everything's coming together for a massive explosion for XRP, in my opinion. It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't want to like get too stuck into it or too like hypey or too moon boy. But guys, I am excited. I can't. I don't know if you can tell. I mean, you probably can. But I am so excited right now. Um, and then next we've got this from Joe Biden. This is what I keep saying, guys. Get your crypto off exchanges. Get it on a hardware wallet. If, if it's a substantial amount of money for you guys, please. Like, I don't know what will happen. I'm not saying, I'm not going to sit here and be like one of the tinfoil hats. Yeah, we're going to get hacked. Like, we're going to lose everything, blah, blah, blah. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Come on. Like, it takes two minutes to put your crypto on a ledger. It might cost you like, what, after fees. 
if, you've, if you're holding XRP, it might cost you like 0.5 XRP to trade it when you're talking about like the fees from the actual exchange or one XRP. I think crypto.com change you to, uh, charge you to send it off. Plus the price of a ledger, $60. But for that, you get security if you're holding your own keys and actually owning your own crypto. But Biden said, the federal government is doing its part to get ready for potential Russian cyber attacks. We're prepared to help private sector companies with tools and expertise, but it's your decision as to take the steps you'll need and your responsibility to take them. So just be blooming careful, guys. If you're not adhering to this, uh, I don't know why. I, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying they're going to hack your exchange. I'm not saying they're going to take your crypto, but I am saying it's better to be safe than sorry. Then this is also some awesome news that didn't really get that much um, attention. Breaking Goldman Sachs $2.1 trillion assets under management uh, makes its first over-the-counter Bitcoin options trade. So basically they've made their first Bitcoin option trade over the counter yesterday, which just means that like they traded directly to a company, uh, like made markets for them, which is the first time they've done that, which is massive, a uh, huge company, obviously. Um, so let's see what happens there. And then finally, I just want to leave you with this today. Uh, obviously, I'm super excited. I want to know what you guys like think. Am I being a bit moon boy? When do you guys think a settlement may come? What do you guys think the price of XRP will be before we see a settlement? Do you think we'll run, we'll run organically and then we'll see a settlement that will really catalyze the market? We'll see things like uh, indexes who have to buy back XRP, relist on exchanges. Where are we going to go with the price? I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. Um, and then finally... This is a really awesome YouTube video. So it's um, Principles for Success by Ray Dalio in 30 minutes. I definitely would recommend watching this. Uh, I've, been, I've watched it twice recently and he's just a super, super clever guy. I, I really love the like generation of investors that he's from. Uh, I don't want to put Raul Pal in that generation because I know Raul was a bit younger. But listening to people who have had the experiences that these boys have had, uh, and the way they talk about life, it's very, very, it's, it's inspiring for someone like me who's, I've just jumped into the financial industry from the deep end, like I didn't have a financial background, I was just a tech nerd and I'm trying to learn everything along the way. And their principles in life are actually very similar to mine in terms of like morals and emotions, which I, I, thought, I thought was very interesting. But learning about the way that they learn and the way they perceive things is incredible. Um, they're incredible people. Uh, I think you have to be to to be that level of excellent that excellence that they that they're at. So that's the end of my YouTube video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with a friend. Drop me a like. Drop me a comment if you've got any questions for me. If you want, if you've got any suggestions on how I can improve these videos for you guys, or what you'd like more, less, etc., uh, just let me know. And other than that, guys, I hope you have a great week. I'll keep you updated if anything mad happens. But follow me over on Twitter and Insta. Um, for, for more frequent updates. I'm trying to come away from TikTok because they just shadow ban me all the time for no reason. Uh, it's a bit of a joke nowadays. But I hope you enjoy this video and I'll speak to you all on the next one. Peace up, A-Town down, as I would say.